1784, Charles Augustine Coulomb performed a series of experiments to establish inverse square law of electrostatic interaction between two charges. The same kind of setup was going to be used by Henry Cavendish 13 years later around 1797 to establish inverse square law of gravitational interaction between two masses. Since the gravitational force and the electrostatic force obey inverse square law and that is gravitational forces by virtue of its mass and electrostatic forces by virtue of its charge and they are going to have very similar uh, equations uh, in terms of force field etc only thing is in place of mass you will be getting charges over here so it is very similar to the chapter which you studied last year like gravitation um, let's see what he said suppose two charges two point charges q1 and q2 are separated by a small distance r so what is a point charge suppose just imagine two thumb sized charged objects which are separated by 10 15 meters compared to the distance of 10 15 meters the thumb size is very small and negligible so that way if the dimensions of the object is so small compared to the distances between them they can be considered as a point charges Suppose two point charges separated by distance r, then the force of interaction, it may be attraction or repulsion, depends on what kind of charges are. Say it, if both are positive, then the, they are going to be repulsive. So force is going to be proportional to product of the magnitude of charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. If you remove this proportionality, you will have to introduce a constant k. In SI system, the constant k is written as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught assuming that these two charges are kept in vacuum then the value here is epsilon naught the constant introduced here is epsilon naught its value is around 9 into 10 power 9 which is which has got unit suppose if you keep k over here bring everything on the other side you will get f r square q1 q2 f is measured in newton r is meter so r square is meter square q1 q2 charges are measured in coulomb coulomb into coulomb coulomb square when that comes to this side coulomb power minus 2 so the value of k is 9 into 10 power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square here this epsilon naught which is called permittivity of vacuum so permittivity of a material or in general permittivity is the ability to store electrical energy or the ability to produce dipoles which will be which we will be seeing in a short while or for this time we can say that a, the property of the material to facilitate electrical interaction but when you write k over here so you will get f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square here this is what the force between two charges when they are kept in vacuum let's call this fv suppose you keep these two charges in a medium same distance these same two point charges with the same distance r but it is kept in a medium of permittivity epsilon then f medium will be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon into q1 q2 by r square see the force in a medium is inversely proportional to epsilon so the least permittivity is that of vacuum every other material will have permittivity greater than that uh, this will explain why a salt dissolves in water so salt which is primarily made up of what uh, our um, table salt sodium and chlorine so this sodium plus ions will be holding or will be attracting chlorine negative ions so they are uh, mutually attracting each other so the space between them is filled with air the moment you put salt and water the space between them is filled with water whose permittivity is greater than that of vacuum but the force in medium is inversely proportional to permittivity of the medium hence the force of interaction decreases and then sodium moves away and chlorine moves away and hence the water salt dissolves in water but if you divide this by this force in vacuum by force in medium what you will get is 
epsilon by epsilon naught. Epsilon is the permittivity of the medium. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of vacuum. The ratio of them is called epsilon r or relative permittivity. So the permittivity here if you write from this you can write epsilon naught is 1 by 4 pi k 1 by 4 pi k its value is around 8.85 into 10 power minus 12. Since epsilon naught is the inverse of k while 4 and pi uh, do not have units then its unit will be coulomb square newton inverse meter inverse square which is essentially the reciprocal of this for now epsilon r or the relative permittivity of a medium is essentially how many times the permittivity of the medium is with respect to air or vacuum if vacuum's permittivity is said to be 1 as permittivity is like 1.0006 so approximately we can take both of them have almost equal permittivity for our problem solving purposes no one thing this k is a dimensional constant and epsilon naught and epsilon are dimensional constants because they have units but epsilon r which is the ratio of these two dimensional constants so both the units will be cancelled hence epsilon r or the relative permittivity do not have epsilon r the relative permittivity does not have unit